Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet. This is Ren Dog coming at you from another episode of Scrappy Racers. In the previous episode, we crafted this magnificent beast known as the Cobra Racer. And we managed to get down that drag strip in 22 seconds, which is twice the speed of the Scrapster E-Series, which did it in 41 seconds. So pretty good on speed. However, the, <laughs> the Cobra Racer had a few issues. It had a few issues with handling, mostly because of its suspension system, which is cute, but really, really wrong. And a lot of you guys hated the fact that we only had one headlamp. All in all, I think it turned out to be a pretty good Scrappy Racer and together we gave it an overall average Scrap rating of 6, which means that it did not get relegated to the junkyard. Today, we are going to be making a Star Wars Pod Racer and it is going to be absolutely awesome, man. Let's get ourselves over to the Scrapyard Workshop and get cracking on today's Scrappy Racer. Before we get a Scrappinade in today, my friends, I just want to take a moment to thank you guys for the amazing feedback and comments and love that you guys are giving the Scrappy Racer series. Man, you guys are slapping that like button like nobody's business, sharing the videos with your friends and giving me some awesome comments and awesome ideas, and uh, I'm I'm just so glad that you guys are enjoying the series because I'm really enjoying making it for you guys and I'm really loving this game. So thank you guys for the love. Keep it coming and hopefully we can make a few more Scrappy Racers episodes and uh, we can make some really, really cool builds. And speaking of cool builds, I'm so pumped for today, man. I've just got back from work. I haven't even eaten yet. I haven't even taken off my damn shoes because I wanted to get straight into recording today because today, my friends, we are making a Star Wars pod racer for our scrappy racer build and oh man it is just going to be so awesome. Also want to say a huge welcome to all of the new subscribers for Scrap Mechanic. I see a ton of you guys have uh, subscribed to me to watch scrappy racers so welcome to the Ren Dog channel. I hope you're enjoying it and go check out my Minecraft stuff if you want to go see some more um, crafting and stuff like that man. We do a whole bunch of Minecraft on this channel too so go check that out. Okay Scrapsters let's get straight into today's build and we are are making a Star Wars pod racer today and it is going to be absolutely amazing. I think I've I've done a little bit of experimenting trying to figure out exactly how we're going to make this pod racer and check it out. I found this really cool block called a table support and check it out. We can actually use this table support to create the arms of our pod racer. Now let me try and break it down for you guys who don't know what a pod racer is. I don't know where you've been for the last 10 years but a pod racer is essentially uh, from Star Wars Episode 1 I think it is and basically what it is it's a little car that you sit in that's connected to two jet engines basically and uh, these these pod racers are raced around really dangerous courses in Star Wars Episode 1 um, and it, they are really really cool the first time I saw Star Wars Episode 1 and saw the pod racers I absolutely fell in love with them and um, I'm so excited to be able to do this build um, in Scrappy Racers. Of course, in Star Wars, the pod racers actually float. They actually levitate, which we're not in, uh, unfortunately going to be able to do. So we're going to have to be a little bit clever with how we make this pod racer. We're going to have to do some clever stuff with wheels um, to make the pod racer feel like it's floating, but of course it's going to be traveling um, on wheels. Now check it out, right? These table supports give us a pretty cool way to create these arms. Now our jet engines are going to be sitting on top of these arms, right? So here's going to be our little cabin or um, where we're going to sit to drive the pod, the, uh, the pod racer. And to either side here, to the left and right, are going to be freaking jet engines. Um, and they're going to be thrusting us down this drag strip and hopefully we'll be able to beat our record of 22 seconds. Now, we're mostly going to be using these various pipe blocks for this build because I think that they fit into the actual lore of Star Wars pod racing quite well. Uh, basically, in Star Wars, the pod racers are absolute maniacs. <laughs> They're all on this one planet and they all build their pod racers out of the junk and, and broken down machinery that has gathered there. And then they race these pod racers for obscene amounts of money and most of them end up dying. So pod racing is, is kind of dangerous and kind of scary. And <laughs> we're going to try and make a pod racer that looks absolutely awesome, but looks like it's been built out of an intergalactic scrapyard. 
right? That's the thinking. Now, what I'm working on over here is the initial support platforms for our thrusters. And I think what we could potentially do is uh, some really cool stuff with these, um, these beams. So check it out. I'm just going to lay down some foundations for these things. Now, these thrusters or these jet engines are two blocks wide, right? So check it out. They look absolutely awesome. Um, there we go. You can actually see them on the floor, right? And what we want to do is try and get them onto these platforms because they are going to be pulling our cabin over here or our driving pod um, down the track. So what I need to try and work out here is exactly how we are going to get our jet engines connected on top of these platforms. And I think we're probably going to have to use these joint pipes like this. And I suppose hmm, that one seems a little bit too short. Maybe we can do this one. Maybe we could do a little something like this, right? So at the very end of the platform, we could put some pipes like that, and then our jet engine will sit quite nicely on it. Check it out. Oh, man, that looks friggin' awesome. Yeah, jet engine is looking sweet. I think that the actual jet engine bit could probably be quite longer. Uh, a little bit longer anyway and for those of you guys who have watched star wars and who know what pod races look like they're really really cool because um each of the jet engine sections has a whole bunch of buttons and levers and stuff coming out of it and i think maybe we could do a little something like that with our pod racer um engine bits so check it out let's get our jet engine installed like that there we go that's looking pretty damn sweet we could actually probably um do something like this too Maybe we extend the end of it a little bit just to make the jet engine feel like it's a little bit longer um, like that. That looks pretty cool. We could probably even come back another space just like so, right? There we go. Just to make it feel like this whole section is actually the engine. That looks pretty sweet. Now, what we could do with this is use some of these table supports maybe and add a bit of um, interest to the end of the engine like that. So that's looking pretty decent. Now, the next thing that we can do is probably add a few bits and pieces into the actual uh, sides of this engine piece. So check it out. If we stick in, I'm just going to do a bit of experimenting here. Let's get some joints in over here. Let's get one like that. And maybe another one in this position like so. And we could put some exhaust pipes coming out the back of it like that. Yeah, baby, that looks freaking awesome, right? So check it out. If we're, if we're sitting in our cabin, um, looking down the pod racer, yes, I like that. That looks very, very cool. And what we could potentially try and do also is get some buttons and stuff into this also. Let me work on a final design for these engines, and then I will bring you back. Oh yes, these pod engines are starting to look absolutely awesome. Check it out guys, added a few more exhaust pipes into the engine sections and these things are looking absolutely amazing right now. Things are coming together quite nicely with this build. Now, one of the problems that a Star Wars pod racer has is of course, this little thing over here is connected to two jet engines. And if you just turn those jet engines on, they're just going to fly off in different directions. So what they do in Star Wars is they actually connect the jet the jet engine pod engines together with some sort of an energy beam now obviously in uh, in scrap mechanic we don't have access to an energy beam so i want to try and experiment today with a little bit more advanced scrap mechanic stuff and i've been watching a couple of youtube channels to try and get my mind around um, some more things that we can do in scrap mechanic like rotation for example there's something called a controller and a switch that we can actually use to create some pretty cool stuff in scrap me mechanic i've been watching a whole bunch of exumavoid videos and he's doing some really excellent um, advanced scrap mechanic stuff. So if you want to go and check that out, go and go and check out his scrap mechanic series, man. You'll get some really good inspiration from it. But check it out. I have an idea, okay? I don't know if I can make it work, but I'm going to experiment with it. I'm going to connect our pod jet engines together using these table supports and these, um, these bearings over here. And what I would like to do is try and figure out a way to make these bearings actually turn. Right? I want to try and make this whole connection that connects these two pod engines, I want to make this rotate. And that's going to add a little bit of life, I think, into this build. And I think that it's actually going to turn out to look pretty damn awesome awesome so we're going to experiment with using the, these controllers and these switches over here and i want to see if i can actually pull this pull this off now what i think we should do hmm we don't have much space left on the actual engine itself for this controller maybe what we do is we stick the controller over here yeah that looks so cool doesn't it look at that yes that adds like a that adds that sort of advanced 
technology look that I'm going for um, on these pod races. Let's add another one over there. Yes, that looks pretty darn cool. Even though it's not 100% symmetrical with the outside of the pod engine, I think that looks absolutely sweet. Now, also, we could add another small little touch here, right? We could add these valves. Yes, let's try and add one of these valves here to either side of the engine. I'm going to try to keep things as symmetrical as possible because I think I was driving you guys crazy with the anti-symmetry of the Cobra. So let's try to keep things as symmetrical as possible. And don't those little valves look amazing on this build? <laughs> oh, they look sweet. Okay, let's get the buttons installed now. Um, we'll put a button on this side and a button on that side, just like that. Maybe we flip this one so that it's symmetrical. Yeah, that's looking sweet. Now, what we can do is, I believe, use this connection tool to connect up um, this controller to the bearing and then the switch to the controller. So check it out. Let's get the controller connected up to this bearing. Then we connect the switch to the controller, right? Now, let's see. If we flick the switch, what happens? Um... Okay, no rotation is happening. Let's open up the switch. What is going on around here? Okay, so we got a whole thing over here. How does this work? Okay, so it looks like we can add a degree of rot rotation editor. Okay, rotation editor. Sweet. So let's add plus 15 degrees. I guess this is slow and fast. Let's keep it fast. And I this looks like loop forever, I suppose. So let's loop forever. Let's see what's happening. Um, anything happening? Let's hit the switch again. Um... Nothing's going on. Let's disconnect this connection. See if we can just get the thing working. What happens if we flip this around like that? Um, okay. If we add a little bit into this, is that going to make it work? Man, how does this actually work now? Hmm. Derp! <laughs> I worked it out, my friends. The reason that our controllers aren't working is because our pod racer is currently on the lift. In Scrap Mechanic, if your vehicle is on the lift, nothing will actually work. The engines won't work, or the switches won't work, or the controls won't work. So we're going to test out this functionality a little bit later on once we get the wheels on our pod racer. I've also added these really cool little features to the end of each of the engine pods. I think that looks pretty cool. And uh, in, in Star Wars, the pod racers actually have these flaps that control the air in taken to the engine so that's what i was trying to emulate over there i think that looks pretty sweet now let's start working a little bit on the wheels for our pod races and i suppose this is going to be kind of tricky to work out and i'm thinking the way that we can do this is by adding um, some wheels to the very front of each of the engines that will allow for maximum st stability i think for our pod racer and it will also help to hide the wheels um, when we are actually sitting inside side of the the pod racer itself remember we want to have the illusion that this bad boy is floating or something like that right so check it out i'm going to stick some pipes onto some bearings so that we can actually have some steering and then i think we probably install some sports suspension at the front here um, and we'll put the wheels like this and i think the wheels should probably go should they go outside maybe maybe they should go outside um, and yeah, well, well, we'll sit in the cockpit now and have a look at uh, whether or not the wheels are hidden if we stick them on the outside like this. And I think we should use small wheels for this build. We don't need those giant ass wheels at the front. So let's get those in like that. Now let's sit in the cockpit of our pod racer and have a look. Oh, the wheels are actually pretty much hidden. You can just see the sort of bottom of them there, can't you? So that's really awesome. I think, yeah, it's perfect that we stick them on the outside. I think if we stuck them on the inside, so facing this way, we would probably be able to see them from the cockpit and um, it would provide less stability uh, also. So that's looking pretty sweet. Now, I think we probably need to add some wheels to the back also, right? Because <laughs> else we'll just be dragging um, our cockpit along, which is not exactly what we want to do. Um, so we're going to have to try and work out exactly how that is going to work out. But so far, this is looking pretty darn sweet. I'm going to start working on the cockpit itself. And once we get this design in place, we can then start working on the final mechanics for this bad boy. And uh, this thing is starting to turn into one sweet ass scrappy racer, uh, if I do say so myself. Okay, it's time to get cray cray up in here, my friends. I've had an idea. Nay, an epiphany. 
I would like to add a third jet engine to this build because I want to go super fast and I want to hit that ramp at the end of the drag strip with an absolute vengeance. And I reckon we stick another thruster to the back of the scrappy racer over here. That's going to help um, to, I don't know, put, put some force onto the front tires, I guess. I'm trying to find some justifications for this, but... I don't have any. I just want to go super fast. So why don't we add another engine there. That looks absolutely sweet. And now we can finish off the cabin design for the pod racer. So check it out. I think we just use some of these really cool wedge blocks um, and we come up like this. And actually, I have had another idea. Why don't we use those controllers that we used um, for each of the pod engines? Where has it gone? Here we go. We could use that inside the cabin itself, right? So check it out. I'd like to get these sort of in here if I can no 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 something like this let's try get the display facing into yes there we go oh that's awesome so check oh yes that's awesome so um we are controlling the pod racer when we are inside check it out man we got our steering wheel and we've got access to some more controls over here that looks pretty damn sweet um loving that oh and check it out man it adds like another little bit of um, interest to the outside over here. That looks freaking sweet. Oh man, that's epic. Um, do we want our pod racer thingy to be blue? I think we do. Let's have like a nice blue stripe over here. I think that looks pretty cool. Or actually, maybe we should keep it completely orange. Let me work on this, guys. I'll be back in a second. Just finished the butthole of the scrappy pod racer, and it is looking freaking awesome, man. Check it out. I've added some lights into the back. Um, I finished off the body, which looks amazing. I love how the batteries look on the side here. You know, we're trying to go for that galactic scrapyard look, and I think that's pretty close to it, man. It's awesome. We've got a couple of tanks here, too. Um, the thrust. Is. We've got some more pipage down there and of course we have an air intake for this thruster and a valve and I'm sorry guys I couldn't get away from this the, the asymmetry. I needed a little bit of asymmetry in my life I think that we can get away with that. Please don't hate me for that guys But I I personally think it looks absolutely awesome. Um, this thing is coming on amazing next up I want to try and get some back wheels into this thing and uh, This kind of worries me a little bit. Let me try get some of this pipage um, and I'm worried because I don't want, I think it's going to look super janky. I'm really happy with how the pod racer is looking at the moment. And I don't want to ruin it with some horrible, ugly wheels. But we're going to need some wheels on the back of this thing, I think, um, to keep it propped up. And I want to try and keep them as low to the ground as possible, or as low to the, the bottom of um, the chassis as possible. I, I want them to be almost invisible. So I'm thinking about... We don't even use any suspension. We just get these wheels connected like this. And I, oh man, is that a little bit, is that like touching? Is that touching the chassis? Um, if it's touching the chassis, then I don't think the wheels are going to turn. Let's just have a look. Oh man, I can't actually see if that's touching the, sh the chassis or not. So we get, uh, it looks like it's not though, which is a good thing. And hopefully these back wheels are a little bit lower than the front wheels to give the illusion that this cockpit is actually just floating in midair. You know what, guys? It's actually time that we can take this to the, the drag strip to do a little bit of preliminary testing. So let's get rid of the lift and have a look at what's cracking. Okay, the wheels are, are, are looking kind of jaunty right now. And that's, of course, because we haven't connected the, uh, the, 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 the steering wheel to them. So let's get all of the wiring done. We're going to connect the steering wheel to these bearings over here which is going to be steering our um, our scrappy racer. Let's just find that bearing, which is over here. There we go. Okay, so the wheel's connected, I suppose. I don't really know how these jet engines work. I guess we have to connect the wheel to the jet engines, just like we would to the normal engines. So let's get those connected. Man, how cool does that look? <laughs> that looks so freaking awesome. Um, okay, so let's get in here. And what happens if we hit the accelerator button? Oh, baby! <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Boom! <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, but it looks like we're, we're trapped in the pit right now. Derp. Um, okay, let me get this thing outside and we'll carry on working on it and do some pre prelim preliminary, preliminary test runs. <laughs> Man, sitting in this bad boy is getting my Star Wars fanboy juices going crazy right now. This is feeling very pod racer to me and I am loving it, man. Mm. 
looking so cool. Um, anyway, we've got one more thing to do before we test this thing down the, the initial test track of the drag racing strip, and that is to try and get some animation into the build itself. And the first thing that I want to try and do is to get these pipes rotating. Let's try this again, okay? We've got our switch over here. We want the switch to control the controller and then the controller to control the rotating bits. So let's get our connector out. I'm gonna connect my switch to the controller, the controller to the bearing, and ooh, that rotated a little bit. Interesting. Okay, let's crack open the controller and have a look what's going on here. It looks like we might, if we throw some numbers in here, let's just throw like 45 in here, what happens? Ooh, that, okay, that was rotating. That rotated a little bit. You know what, I think, is this like a timer? If we throw some more stuff in here like this, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's turning and it's making a, a noise. That's freaking awesome. Okay, I've made it work, but I'm not going to be able to tell you guys why it works, okay? <laughs> I haven't got my mind around the mechanics of this controller, but let me show you what I've done. I have connected the switches to the controller and the controller to the bearings. I have then configured the controller uh, in increasing increments of 30. So we go 30, 60, 90, etc., all the way up to 330. And I've also hit this um, uh, always loop or, or loop button, uh, whatever the, the jazz that is. Now, when we hit the button, we can see that it starts the rotation of the bearing. It looks kind of sweet, makes a cool noise. We can turn this one on also. And there you can see that we have a whole bunch of rotation going on. Basically, it doesn't really matter how it rotates. Essentially, all I want to achieve is that when I'm sitting in the cockpit and looking down the pod racer, there is some movement there. And that kind of brings the build to life, doesn't it? Look at that, man. That is so freaking awesome. I'm loving that. Now, I've had another really crazy idea, and I don't know whether you guys are going to like this or not, but I'm going to try it out. Um, a lot of you guys, or, or a few of you guys anyway, in the comments of the previous episodes, noticed this little duck over here, or this little chicken thing. And I would like to get this chicken into our scrappy racer. The theory being, of course, that this thing has been built from a galactic scrapyard, and we want to add a little bit of uh, je ne sais quoi, if you will, into the build, add something weird, right? Add something that the fans can recognize when we're cruising down the strip. And I thought we could add a little something interesting over here, guys. Check it out, right? Why don't we add, maybe we use this thing because it looks really cool, and we add a bearing on top of this, right? So check it out, we'll stick a bearing up here, a uh, boom. And we can stick this little ducky or this little chicken on top of this bearing like that. And the theory goes, if, let's have a look, if we connect this controller to that bearing, right, is that going to make the duck turn around? You guys picking up what I'm putting down over here, man. I want this duck to rotate when I hit this button. Let's have a look. If we smack the button... No, the little duck doesn't actually do anything. So let's go back into the controller. Oh, we actually have another um, another row here. So this is for the duck, okay? This row is for the duck. And maybe this pod racer should just be called the duck <laughs> or something. Although I think it's probably a chicken. I don't actually know. Um, but I suppose we, we could name our pod racer after whatever animal that thing actually is. I'm just, you know what, I'm going to call it the duck, <laughs> because to me it looks like a duck. Um, but anyway, we're going to go up in increments of 30 over here to configure the rotation. And we're going to go all the way up to 330. Um, let's get this in place like that. And finally, this goes all the way up to 330. Axolot, can you make it a little bit easier to manage these things, please? I uh, thank you. All right, there we go. Check it out, man. Our duck is spinning. That's awesome. Let's sit in the cockpit and have a look down, down the cockpit. <laughs> that is so freaking awesome. Look at that. Oh, baby, that is sweet. Now, of course, we're going to have to balance this build because um, not only is this adding extra weight to the right-hand to the right -hand side of our pod racer, uh, but it is slightly out of line also, um, symmetry-wise. So, let's add another one of these poles here, and, and we probably would just, just add, like, a ventilation pipe in there, right? Let's have a look what we're looking at. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Although, i got to say, the duck and the ventilation chamber are 
uh, hiding the, the actual pod engines from our view and that's not cool. So let me try a little something different here. I can hear your guys OCD through the interbubs right now. It's making me deaf. I know that one of these numbers was wrong, just spotted it and just fixed it. Okay, <laughs> so you can, guys can, uh, can relax. Just take a chill pill, my friends. There we go. Everything has been set up. The duck is now sitting a, one, a couple of blocks lower than it was before, as is the ventilation pipe. And let's sit in the cockpit and have a look. That's much better. <laughs> that is so awesome. Check it out, man. We can see both of our pod engines. We, and the duck and this ventilation pipe actually hide the wheels completely, right? So now we can't see those front wheels at all. And the illusion of of uh, levitation is now complete. That is absolutely awesome. Now we've got our buttons installed over here. Um, let's just turn this off for now. Oh, that's actually gonna initiate that rotation. We're gonna turn on both of our pod engines. That's the theory anyway, right? When we flick these buttons, we turn on the engines, we turn on the duck. And of course, this thing cannot actually function without the duck. And now we can sit in the cockpit and we are now ready for our very first pod racer test well friends i gotta tell you i've been thinking about this moment all day long at work today man i couldn't wait to get home to make this thing and i can't wait to take it down the drag strip let's take it for a pre preliminary test i'm going to turn on the pod engines a boom get that jazz rotating get the duck a going get in the cockpit and now let's get our thrusters going and check it out man we got some pretty good hang handling on this puppy actually and remember that with these thrusters, we can't actually set their strength as we get, can with the gas and the electric engines. Literally, these engines just go, baby. As you can see, oh my goodness, we have got some serious speed a crack in here. This is freaking awesome. Handling is, oh, handling is okay. Not the greatest. And it looks like if we fall over, we got problems. Derp. Just worked out also guys that thrusters don't let you go in reverse so essentially we are in a death trap that only goes forward and is accelerated by jet engines so I don't know if we're going to get to the ramp at the end of this course but I'm going to do my freaking best to get there I want to do one more test here just before we start today's scrappy race to see if I can actually keep this thing under control it feels like I just have to make sure that I control the acceleration. Once we get too fast down the track, it feels like we lose a little bit of traction, especially at the front of the pod racer. So I just gotta be a little bit gentle with my accelerator foot, <laughs> dang it. Okay, I've got a theory, my friends. I think the reason our handling is so poor is because we're not heavy enough for the power of these thrusters. So I'm adding a little bit of weight to each of the pod engines using these duct blocks. And I think they're pretty cool and they fit the theme that we are making this pod racer out of scrap metal that has been collected from across the galaxy. That should add a little bit more weight into the build. You can already see there's a little bit more weight on top of those wheels, which is excellent. We could probably add a bit more weight to the back of our um, scrap eraser also. And we could do that by adding some, I don't know, maybe we could add um, a few support beams or something like that. So let me get that in place. Or maybe a, maybe a, a roll cage of some kind, right? That could work out quite nicely. Let me get that in place. And then we'll do a, a final preliminary test before hitting the racetrack. Okay, let's see how she handles with a little bit more weight added to the front and the back. The handling is definitely improved. Although when we get to the sort of top speed, we start to lose it quite bad. Badly. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh! Damn! <laughs> well, you know what, my friends? We're just gonna have to bite the bullet, man. It's YOLO time, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from across the galaxy, welcome to the third Scrappy Race of 2016. Drivers, start your engines. DJ, burn that record! Let the scrappy race begin in three, two, one, go! Thrusters at full blast, my friends, and our scrappy pod racer is cruising down the drag strip. It's going pretty well so far. I feel like the traction is a little bit off, especially as we reach those top speeds. 
Let's just try and keep it together. I'm going to take my foot of the accelerator when I feel that traction starting to release. And we can then get up to full speed if we can. We are approaching the finish line, but things are starting to slip all over the place. Things are going well, though. We can get to the finish line. I think it's coming up. Let's get a little bit of a better view of the Scrappy Racer. And yes, there is the finish line. I think we're going to make it. The last thing that we need to do is get to that ramp. That is our primary goal for today. Can we hit the ramp at full freaking blast? Come on, Scrappy Pod Racer, you can do it! Oh, you bastard. You freaking bastard. Well, Scrapsters from all over the world, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Scrappy Racers with me, Ren Dog. I hope you guys had a really awesome time. I had an absolute blast making this Scrappy Pod Racer and I think it turned out pretty damn awesome. But of course, whether or not this thing gets relegated to the junkyard is entirely up to you guys. So in the comment section below, give our Star Wars pod racer a scrapometer rating of between one and 10. And if this sucker gets below five, it's going straight into the junkyard, my friends. Personally, I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10 for looks and design. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Handling and speed, well, those are, uh, yeah, that, that, there's, there's a much to be desired on those two fronts. I'm gonna give it a three out of 10 for handling and a five out of 10 for speed. So I guess I'm looking at an average of between six and seven for this bad boy. But of course, it's gonna be all up to you guys. So get rating in the comment section below, my friends. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. Hope you had a great time, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to smack that like button, share this video and subscribe if you wanna see more Scrappy Racers on the Ren Diggity Dog channel. Thanks so much for watching my friends and we will see you all in the next episode of Scrappy Racers!